no trajectory. So there is no, the geometric concepts don't make it. For example, we have all been taught in high school that you know the electron goes around the nucleus. That's not true. There is no such thing as a, an orbit in the quantum, uh, in quantum physics. Because as we get to Heisenberg uh, uncertainty principle, you will see that position and velocity cannot be measured exactly. Which means a trajectory cannot, I mean, it means project, if you don't know position and um, this thing exactly, then all you have is a fuzzy kind of a, a line which you can draw with, uh, which may happen something else there. It's only that you can measure it simultaneously. Simultaneously, correct. But you do, but you can say where it is at any given time, but not know its velocity at that No, and uh, um, um, if you know its velocity, you don't know its position. Mm -hmm. If you know its position, you don't know its velocity. Yeah. Next one, please. You had said that when you send a, um, something from here to the sun, it goes instantaneously. That's not true, right? It takes time to get from no, here. No, but the point is that uh, I'm giving a, um, I'm exaggerating a little bit to say that uh, it must go follow the limit of the velocity of light is violated at the point that that's what I'm, that is called locality. Non-locality is that now it is experimentally verified that at the quantum level, that velocity of light is no longer a limit. So things can travel instantaneously. People have even come up with hypothetical particles called tachyons, which are supposed to be faster than light. No, uh, but I, my uh, concern, okay, uh, the previous one, let's go back to the previous one, okay? Superposition, etc. the wave function gives you this, when an experiment is made to observe it, they collapse into a single position, okay? That's called the collapse. So this was a very great uh, problem uh, with uh, um, uh, this person, uh, with uh, Schrodinger and Einstein. You see, there were two schools of thought, what you might call the classical, which is Einstein and all that, and another one, Schrodinger. The superposition tells you uh, the different things that can happen, uh, but um, it doesn't define anything. Next one, please. So, so if you make such a statement, isn't that equivalent to the ultimate of um, the ultimate Vedantic principle of you are that or whatever because instantaneously if you are able to get the photon from here to there then it Not it photon, photon, not photon. Something. So, say some particle. Yeah. So it is that the whole, um, if you move it as uh, far away as possible or you keep it as close as possible, you are now illustrating the fact I, I the oneness right. of... Uh, you are probably right, you are probably right because I will come to it later. The concept of motion and distance disappear at the quantum level. If an electron, uh, uh, you see, and also it doesn't lose its strength. That means the signal becomes weaker. But that doesn't happen with quantum mechanics. The further you move, the signal doesn't become weaker. We don't even know what it is. So um, at, a, at this level, we don't really, we, that's why uh, Murray Gell-Mann said that uh, the, the quantum mechanics is a mysterious thing. We all know how to use, but we don't know what it means. And uh, Feynman said, "We don't have nobody, and you don't feel if you don't understand it because feel bad because nobody understands it. We know how to use it. Okay, you, we know we can make a prediction using the theory, and we can perform experiments, uh, which, on an average, because you're dealing with probabilities, to an accuracy of the tenth decimal measurements. We can they're so accurate, but we don't know why that happens." But we, we can write down equations and all those kinds of things. There is nothing beyond that. So, so just as Einstein came up with the idea of the field, you know, to describe the gravitation and action and get rid of action and distance, there is something else here that is not described by classical concepts like distance, velocity, and all that. In a pr proposal that I have submitted, I have said that we should do away, because there is no gravitation. What is gravity? Gravity is geometry. Any book on gravity today will tell you, but that is what it is. Gravity is geometry. Because it's given by, uh, you know, the, the non-Euclidean geometry, pseudo uh, non-Euclidean geometry, because you're looking at space-time uh, in time-like intervals. And so, so, uh, you see, the Schrodinger's cat experiment is something like this. Next one, please. This is a very famous one. So here is a, um, a radioactive device, which may decay very slowly, which may emit 
uh, and uh, a particle, uh, and uh, an alpha particle or something, um, let us say in one hour, or if you want to know the random link, we don't know when exactly, it may or may not do it, okay? And you put a vial of poison with a small hammer, which as soon as it, uh, um, it decays, it hits it, and then that breaks the bird containing uh, the uh, cyanide, that cyanide gas kills the cat, okay? So, uh, if, uh, uh, if you are not comfortable with radioactive decay, you can think of it as a popcorn popper, which uh, throws out popcorn at random, Physically, it's the you know it's the same conceptually it's the same experiment. This happens, and what happens next? Uh, next slide, please. I think uh, the cat. So, in one hour, uh, perhaps one atom disintegrates or one popcorn strikes, but with equal probability, none may happen. So, if somebody asks you after one hour is the cat alive or dead, your equation says it's both alive and dead. It could be. It, yeah, that's right. It is. It is because. Uh, uh, it's, it is not dead. You don't. Therefore, it is alive. It may not be alive. Therefore, it could also be dead. You, you're right. But the point is, there is no certainty. Okay. So it goes beyond probability of heads and tails or anything. Hmm? So after hour, we have to say that the cat is both alive and dead with equal probability. So its psi function is the superposition of alive and dead states, living and dead states. Okay. This. Uh, has not been to give new explanations, I mean, the function and all that. Although we know how to deal with it mathematically, we have no physical explanation for this. Okay. Next one, please. So this leads us to mysterious looking result, uh, H, H is uh, 2 pi, which is uh, what amazed me when I read a little bit of the history of it is people were puzzled by that uh, the non commutativity. I mean, we teach matrices in high school now. But even a scientist of the caliber of Heisenberg, in those days, a physicist of that caliber had never seen matrices. He, they puzzled over it. He practically recreated infinite matrices and all that. And he found this thing. And the curious thing is, this H quantity, which is delta chi t times delta is energy times time, or position times momentum, they all have the dimensions, physical dimension of action. What is action? It is time times energy. Okay. It has no physical meaning in the classical world. It is simply a mathematical device introduced by Hamilton. You see, action has no physical What kind of energy they have physical meaning? Mm -hmm. uh, action has no physical meaning. It's purely a mathematical device. What does work multiplied by time mean? Nothing. It, uh, it performs no physical, uh, it's a, uh, um, you use it in uh, Hamilton's principle, principle of destruction. That's all. Well, just, I guess if, if you read like, the Feynman lectures, like he says energy itself has no physical meaning. That's one case. That's his view. Yeah. He says that because he's heavily influenced by quantum physics. Unlike an earlier generation of physicists who came from classical physics, Feynman started with quantum physics. You see, the relativity also. Today we don't find it all that puzzling. You know, it was so revolutionary for those people. In fact, even Galileo was amazed. Uh, you know, the people have a wrong idea of why Galileo was uh, uh, persecuted. Um, he, he, didn't, uh, he didn't oppose the church or anything. What he said was that um, the language of nature is written um, uh, in mathematics and uh, uh, of the heavens or everything. And the church would not accept it because they said, look, mathematics is the creation of man. Heavens are the creation of God. So how can mathematics describe? It? So the word of the language of God is theology. So only theology can be, be used to describe nature and not uh, uh, mathematics, which is man's creation. So um, uh, to them, it was perfectly logical. So, so the dimension of H seems to be fundamental in quantum physics. You see, I'm, I'm not worried about the magnitude. It's very small. Everybody knows 10 to the minus uh, 27 or something, uh, 34, depending on the uh, uh, An next one, please. But the dimension, it seems to have some meaning. Because just as velocity of light sets a limit in what I have called the coherent world, uh, the quantum of action sets a limit on our knowledge in the incoherent world. 
That is the limit we have. Nothing can go beyond that. Okay? The relativity are two define two physical words. Space time world is where gravity is geometry and locality holds. Coherent in the sense we know what we are measuring. Incoherent world, where only uncertainty is certain. We don't know what we are measuring, but know how to measure it. And all our measurements and observations take place in the coherent world. So we have a picture in the coherent world of phenomena that is really taking place in the incoherent of the quantum. I have used the, this, you, you may or may not like coherent being coherent, but uh, I have used it for my convenience. Next one, please. But isn't it true even in a coherent world when you're measuring lightning as an electrostatic charge? You can measure it, but you really don't know what electrostatic charge is other than it just exists. When you yeah, but here we don't even know what exists. That's the problem, you see. No, at the quantum level, we don't know what exists. In every field of activity, you, you measure the laws of nature. What, by the, your measurements, you know they exist. No, but no, no, what I'm saying, but look, look uh, the, here, whether we measure it or not, it exists. The velocity of light exists, whether you measure it or not. Yeah. But in the quantum world, no, we have no such certainty. Without measurement, it has no existence. At least that's, uh, you see, that's the fundamental debate. No, I was just referring only to the incoherent world statement. No, you see, the language, you know, whenever you uh, describe phenomena, especially as something which is uh, uh, indescribable, you have to choose some words. I was not coming from that point of view. I'm very appreciative of what you're saying. I'm only trying to relate to probably what we read in Vedanta in the sense coherent world is to us when we can put the causal connections in a tangible manner. Mm -hmm. But in every coherent world, we are essentially trying to probe the incoherent, which is the loss of nature. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay. So the, the, yeah, that's so the duality saying. exists only as Incoherence also uh, exists at different levels of understanding. That's also that. So duality exists as long as you are living in the coherent world. Mm -hmm. And once you accept loss of nature merely exists, and we are all influenced by the loss of nature, the non-duality happens just a matter of, just by its very nature. Mm, that uh, not everyone may, but uh, Macharya would not have agreed with you. No, I mean, at least that's what you learned from Sankracharya's. Sankracharya. Yeah. So, you see, that. it again comes down to a matter of debate. Yeah. Um, you see, I'm writing a book on this subject, so it is curious to me that the debate between Einstein and Bohr seems to be an echo in a different context of the debate between Shankara and Bhagavad and, and their followers. Of course, they were not contemporary, so they couldn't debate. Uh, so, so, the basic thing is, uh, we are dealing with a very fundamental metaphysical problem. Coherent world is one in which what we measure, velocity, distance, etc. Right? It's governed by locality, limit set, and cause and effect separable. Okay. So, uh, and you see, I didn't go into the causality question, because once you drop the, the locality, that is the speed of light, consideration, then you don't know what is cause and what is effect, okay? Because the effect may come before the cause. Suppose your opponent, you are a boxer, you, your opponent falls down before you land the punch. The falls first and then you land the punch because it's traveling faster than light, okay? There is no speed limit, yeah. Of course, sometimes you see that in the, you know, WWF bouts, I mean, these people, <laughs> so that, uh, that has no cause effect thing. So it is described by space-time geometry and lots of classical physics, including relativity. No instantaneous action at a distance. So gravity is geometry, according to relativity. So next, please, and uh, we'll go to the incoherent world of the quantum, dominated by uncertainty. That's the foundation. Mm -hmm. Geometric concepts like position, path, and seem to me, uh, no, I should have said, uh, this is not correct, this is in more. Non-locality and action at a distance appear Nobody understands it, etc.